The World Cup is almost here and we're freaking excited about it. The 32 teams have been selected, but there were a couple of countries around the world, some that you know, some that you don't, that nearly made the World Cup and the entire time it's going on in November, they will be kicking rocks thinking about what could have been. And the first one of those teams is Iraq. Yes, Iraq, a team you probably didn't think was particularly close to the World Cup. Well, not only did they have these fantastically awesome kits, I mean, Kit's pretty nice too. But Iraq was this close to actually making it to the Asian playoff where they very likely could have gone all the way based off what we know. Iraq went into the final match day of the season needing to win against Syria and they needed the United Arab Emirates to not win against South Korea who had 23 points in qualifying through nine matches up to this point. And the United Arab Emirates naturally went and won an absolutely massive one nil victory while Iraq plummeted to a draw against a Syrian team that had just five points from its first nine matches. Iraq also fumbled against Iran and South Korea, losing both of those matches when any points there would have made life easier, and drew against Lebanon down the stretch, which is an extra two points that could have made absolutely all the difference. If Iraq had managed to beat the two worst teams in its group down the stretch, Lebanon and Syria, Iraq would have been in the Asian playoff. And I know that's all part of a hypothetical, but that's very close for the 2007 Asian Cup champions. They were right on the doorstep, but instead the United Arab Emirates got to play Australia in what ended up being an excellent playoff match. Now there were of course a lot of playoffs, but we're not going to mention the playoff teams. That's way too easy of an answer. So the United Arab Emirates losing to Australia, Peru losing to Australia. Those teams were obviously almost in the World Cup. They were 90 minutes and in some cases much less than that. Peru losing on penalties, UAE losing in the last five minutes, even closer. New Zealand losing 1-0 to Costa Rica. They were obviously tremendously close to the World Cup. And all the European playoff losers from Scotland to North Macedonia to Italy. Sorry, I had <laughs> to make a face. Those teams were obviously almost in the World Cup as well, so we're talking about the teams that weren't in those playoffs that were still pff, right there, almost at the World Cup. That's an attempt to spare me from the comments. So what about this team? Look, you know you were, like, we, we all watched the same playoffs. But in the second group in Asia, there was another team that was uh, this close. If you look at Group B, you see Saudi Arabia, then you see Japan, then you see Australia, everything's looking super normal. And then you see Oman. And then you look at the point total and you realize Oman is one point away from Australia, who's going to the World Cup right now. They beat Peru on penalties, they beat the UAE, they're going to the World Cup and Oman was one point away. In a particularly cruel twist with three matches to go in qualifying, Oman and Australia played and they drew at two. Australia lost its final two matches to Saudi Arabia and Japan. Oman won its final two matches against Vietnam and against China. That put them in perfect position to strike. The issue is they also lost to Japan and Saudi Arabia, but they did better than Australia down the stretch. They lost both those matches by one, One, where Australia actually lost to Japan by multiple goals and lost to Saudi Arabia by a single goal. Australia was actually incredibly poor against the teams above them. They only mustered four wins in the qualifying section and got one point from four matches against Japan and Saudi Arabia, a draw against Saudi Arabia, where Oman actually managed to kick off their qualifying campaign with a win in Japan. That's a very impressive display. It put Japan on notice, who ended up qualifying comfortably in the end, and nearly was enough to put Oman up against the United Arab Emirates for a chance to play Peru. And who knows what happens. But Oman is not a team you'd think was that close. And the next near miss was the subscribe button, which of course you could change by clicking that if you're enjoying this video. Why is that in the script? While you're down there, you can also hit the like button. Get out of here, you stupid YouTuber. What? That's too much YouTubing. Fine. Leave. Come on. Now, there were two other teams in the Asian second qualifying round that were close to getting to the final stage and showed ability in that stage to make some serious noise. That would be Uzbekistan, who only lost to Saudi Arabia by a goal, but they did lose to them both times. The issue for Uzbekistan that knocked them out was that they had an inexplicable loss on the road against Palestine, which meant the third and the second place team table, they just missed the cut to get into the final round. This is an Uzbek team that has missed the World Cup on goal difference and by a point in the past 12 years as well. So heartbreak again for them. And the other heartbreak is because we mentioned Iraq already. Well, Bahrain should have finished ahead of Iraq in the previous freaking round. Yes, that Bahrain. No, zoom in. 
that one on the world map finished with 15 points iraq with 17 and iran with 18. the top two go through and the second place teams have to go into that table i just mentioned well bahrain would have finished above iraq if it wasn't for a nil nil draw at hong kong a team a significant portion of you probably didn't know existed as a national team yes bahrain drew against hong kong but had a better goal difference and if it picked up those two points and won at hong kong then it would have advanced on goal difference over Iraq. In the last five matches, they also drew Iraq at nil. A win there would have flipped it in to add insult to injury. The final match of qualifying for Bahrain was a 4-0 win over Hong Kong. Africa had drama abound. So many teams that were so close to making the World Cup. You got to win the group to get to the final round of qualification, which is like a home and away thing. Burkina Faso is playing Algeria. Burkina Faso's never been to the World Cup. They need to get to this playoff in order to try and get there. And they're playing Algeria. Final match day of Burkina Faso wins. They eliminate the perpetual World Cup participants. Algeria. This Algeria that's been to the round of 16 in the last decade. Burkina Faso drew them at two. One goal away from getting to the Africa. African World Cup playoff for the Burkinabe. And the exact same situation was nearly replicated in Group B. Equatorial Guinea, a team you probably haven't thought of, was right behind Tunisia and beat Tunisia. They beat Tunisia one to nothing in the second to last match of the group. Tunisia's going to the freaking World Cup. Algeria, of course, got upset by Cameroon in the last second goal, and they deserve their own bad beat for that. But Equatorial Guinea needed a win against Zambia or Mauritania. That's what they needed. They couldn't get either. They drew both of those matches and on the last day, Tunisia beat Zambia 3-1 to one to get itself ahead of Equatorial Guinea and get into the African playoff. That close. And Equatorial Guinea is here, by the way, because I, I knew you were curious. Cape Verde was doing the same thing as Burkina Faso, Nigeria, a team that had the longest World Cup streak out of Africa of anyone, which of course ended this year on their brutal loss to Ghana. Well, Cape Verde drew Nigeria on the final day. One more goal for Cape Verde, and Nigeria was out in the group stage. And Cape Verde, a team that's also never been to the World Cup, would have been playing for that right in a home and away. And just because African qualifying is fantastic, how about the fact that Ivory Coast and Cameroon played on the final day? Cameroon needed to win, and they did. They beat Ivory Coast one to nothing to knock out the L'Elefance. The Le That's not... <clears throat> Right. And the indomitable Lions go through and score a last second goal to knock out Algeria and go to the World Cup. Ivory Coast, tough beat and a near miss. There's also Benin that just needed to draw on the final match day against DR Congo to go to the playoff. You've probably never thought about Benin in your life, but they've got a solid national team that nearly, nearly got to the final 10 in Africa to play that home and away. And you never know how the draw goes and you can eke your way through 180 minutes. Just ask Tunisia. They knocked out Mali, who was this close to getting to its first World Cup. 1-0 over 180 minutes and the only goal that Tunisia scored, an absolutely savage own goal. It's the only reason Mali is not going to the World Cup. And it must be said, I respect the Tunisian national team. I'm happy to see them at a World Cup. They're competitive. They're fun. I love Wabi Khazri. Mali was the better team in that 180 minutes. Tunisia just killed the game off brilliantly after the own goal. But a brutal, brutal near miss for Mali, a team that's never been to the World Cup. It all pales in comparison, though, to this. That's South Africa's flag. They finished behind Ghana on goals four. And they played Ghana on the final match day of Group G. And they lost. One to nothing to Ghana. They lost on a penalty that could best be described as a phantom penalty. It was a brutal call. That penalty, the only reason Ghana got the one nothing win, finished ahead of South Africa and then went on to knock out Nigeria in the playoff, producing not one, but two bad beats. Because not only did South Africa get eliminated savagely by Ghana, Nigeria was also definitely the better team and gave up an incredibly soft equalizer on the road and a way goal that carried Ghana through 1-1 in Nigeria. Ghana savaging two nations and making no friends. South Africa inches away Away from a shot at a World Cup berth for the first time since hosting. And if you want to know how bad the South Africa beat was in particular, the officiating performance was fairly one-sided. The South African Football Association actually tried to get the match replayed. That's how bad it was. It was rejected, and they go straight into the just missed category. In CONCACAF, which is North America, Central America, in the Caribbean, there were two just missed teams to bring up. One, Panama who got brutalized in the back half of the table. We look at the table here, Costa Rica finishes fourth, they win their international playoff and they're going. Panama thought they had that spot locked in. They got screwed and they got screwed by something they had no control over. In the second round of matches for Costa Rica, their last seven matches, Costa Rica got 19 
of 21 points. They beat everyone and drew Mexico. And as you might know, if you can do math, I can't, but I figured this out anyways. Costa Rica had six points after its first seven matches and then went on the tear of tears to fly by a Panama team that would have thought 21 points from 14 matches was good enough for the top half of the table, but it wasn't. And that's a brutal near miss. And that counts as a brutal near miss for a team that was trying to make consecutive World Cups after having never made the World Cup until 2018. But they're not the only one because Panama was that close. But you know who was that close to Panama? Curacao, a nation of 150,000 people in the Caribbean with a strong diaspora because of its Dutch roots, actually only lost to Panama two to one on the road against Panama and then drew nil nil at home against Panama. So if Panama played well enough to potentially go to the World Cup, Curacao is right there. And it's a tough draw because you had El Salvador, St. Kitts and Nevis and Haiti, all teams that Curacao would have likely thought they could beat in this round of qualifying to get to those final eight teams. And they nearly took it off Panama anyways, a World Cup team from 2018. I'm bringing this up in part because I want you to know about the Curacao national team. Not only is this a just miss here, they should be able to make the World Cup four years from now because Canada, Mexico, and the United States won't be in qualifying as host nations. So there will be open spots and why not have the smallest country to ever make the World Cup? be Curacao. They're clearly pretty good. In South America, there aren't many teams. So there's not a lot of teams that can get screwed, but Colombia did manage to screw itself. After a promising start, Colombia then drew six of eight matches in a stretch through the middle of qualifying and promptly showed up and lost 1-0 to Peru at home in a match that ended up being decisive, giving Peru the shot at the Intercontinental Playoff by a point. Now, Peru obviously bottled this in penalties against Australia, but a Colombian team that had finally gotten comfortable being back to the World Cup drew six of eight and then lost the decisive match against Peru. They at least mustered wins against Venezuela and Bolivia to make things nervous for Peru. But in the end, they could not catch their South American brethren and ended up just on the other side. In Oceania, which is essentially everything east of Australia that you can't find on a map, New Zealand usually has the run of things. And they did. In the final, they beat Solomon Islands five to nothing to qualify for the Intercontinental Playoff. But the team that counts as our just miss here was in the semi-final, because this is the team that gave New Zealand the most problems. I'm talking about Tahiti, who you might remember from their heroic performance at the Confed Cup, a team that has beaten New Zealand in the past to get to major tournaments. Well, they almost did it again. New Zealand only beat Tahiti one to nothing. And you're telling me a team that loses to New Zealand one to nothing couldn't handle a team that New Zealand beat five to nothing in the next round, and get to the Intercontinental Playoff. Well, if you are telling me that, I wouldn't believe you. This Tahitian team was one goal away from keeping it level pegging with New Zealand and then would have been heavy favorites in the final match day in Oceania to get to the Intercontinental Playoff. That is a tough gut shot to take. Then, of course, there is Europe. We mentioned there's a bunch of teams that went to the playoff and were very close to going to the World Cup, but they didn't. There are also other teams that were that close to getting to the World Cup, either outright or in the playoffs, that came up short and we'll have to find a way to live with it. The first one being Finland. Everybody was happy for Ukraine. They won their final match and they managed to not lose in the entire qualifying section while drawing six and winning two. It was kind of a crazy qualifying run for Ukraine that they absolutely deserved and I think people were happy to see. But the team that ended up getting screwed in this and just missing was Finland. On the final day, Finland needed Ukraine to not beat Bosnia and Herzegovina, a team that was previously in Nations League A and has been to World Cups before and is definitely not bad. And then Finland could have gotten any points against France at all and made things interesting, and both of those things didn't happen. On the final match day, Ukraine won just its second win of qualifying against Bosnia and Herzegovina, and Finland ended up losing to France 2 to nil, knocking the Finns, who just made their first major tournament ever at the Euros, out of World Cup contention on the final day. Then there was Norway and the wild Group G, where on the final match day, Norway played the Netherlands and Turkey played Montenegro and Turkey and Norway were on 18 points and Netherlands were on 20 points. All three of those teams could finish first. All three of those teams could get knocked out outright and Norway was the team that got knocked out outright. Turkey went on to win against Montenegro which isn't quite as easy as it sounds, especially for a Turkish team that does struggle with some sort of bottling syndrome in the last decade. And Norway, with a win against the Netherlands, would have controlled its own fate anyways, but they lost on the final match day. So just like Finland, things conspiring on the final day to eliminate Norway and rob us of Erling Holland at a major tournament. But Group I gave us two different teams that just missed out, Albania 
and Hungary. Just look at Nations League A to know exactly how competent Hungary's national team is. They've got Dominic Sabolislai, they've got Attila Salai, they've got a competent team all the way around that plays well together, a la Iceland of six years ago. Albania's made a Euros in the last decade. They are also a competent national team, and this was a tough group. For Albania, they just missed their shot. They ended up two points away from Poland in the final table, and they got there because they lost a heads-up match to Poland that essentially decided who would finish above the other team. They lost that match 1-0, and that is just such a bitter pill. <laughs> Albania was at home. That was with three matches to go, and you kind of knew it was going to decide what happened. And then Hungary was also within three points of finishing next to Poland, who, of course, is now in the World Cup. The issue is that Hungary lost at home to Albania. They beat each other up. Hungary, if they'd managed to win at home against Albania, would have been right in that conversation again it came down to one match for the hungarians despite their amazing nations league performance they're just not going to the world cup by three points and the final team to just miss out is romania romania missed by one point being in north macedonia's position now who knows if they would have been able to have beaten italy or portugal in that crazy tough draw that the second place team out of group j ended up with but romania did have a shot going into the final two matches if they won those final two matches they were ahead of north macedonia and they would have gone into the second place qualifying the issue is that they drew iceland this is an iceland team that finished qualifying with just nine points and is on a downward swing from their golden generation and salt to injury as north macedonia beat this same iceland team on the final day of qualifying to solidify their finish one point above Romania. My apologies to you if you are from or a fan of one of these countries, because it is a brutal thing to nearly miss out on a World Cup. I know from experience four years ago, my condolences, at least your story is out there. Those are the teams that were this close to making it to the World Cup, but will not be a part of this coming World Cup in November. And there will be a lot more videos about those teams later. We did already simulate the 2022 World Cup on Football Manager on my Twitch stream, which you can check out at the link down in the description. That is right there. That's why I keep pointing in that spot so feel free to enjoy that video next you do you do you you're for real